because the sentence is in now. In the case of Guy Reffitt, that uh, convicted rioter, essentially. I want to get right to NBC's Ken Delanian, who is outside federal court here in Washington, and MSNBC legal analyst Danny Savalos. Um, the sentence, Ken, just over seven years, huh? Moments ago, handed down, Hallie, seven and a quarter years. Now, that's on the lower range of what the judge ruled the guidelines suggested were appropriate in this case. And the prosecution was asking for much more, as high as 15 years in prison. They lost uh, on a couple of legal issues. Um, most uh, importantly, this, their effort to seek a terrorism enhancement to label this case domestic terrorism. The judge declined to do that. Um, this sentence followed uh, a roller coaster day of legal arguments, and, which culminated in Guy Reffitt himself speaking before the judge and sort of making a last minute plea that he was remorseful and apologetic after months of saying the opposite and essentially arguing from jail that he was a martyr and fundraising. And he even suggested that some of his rhetoric was really about raising money for his family. The judge made it pretty clear she didn't buy it, that she thought he was just telling her what she wanted to hear. But at the end of the day, she sentenced him to uh, you know, a, a hefty prison sentence, the longest of any of the January 6th defendants. The previous longest was five years. But nonetheless, much, much less than prosecutors were seeking. Prosecutors yeah. had tried to portray Refit as, as standing alone among January 6th defendants in his malevolence, but they did not succeed in convincing the judge today, Hal. Uh, I want to get back to some of what we heard from Guy Reffitt, Ken, as he was delivering his own statement to bring viewers up to speed there, because it is colorful, to say the least. But, Danny, let me get your um, initial reaction from the legal perspective on the sentence, what it means and what it says. Defendants have an absolute right to address the court. That doesn't mean that they should in all circumstances, especially in a case like this where there might be appellate issues. It's often very risky to put your client on the stand at a federal sentencing hearing because they may say something that would compromise the appellate rights. I mean, everything they say is on the record and they're essentially testifying. So that can be a real challenge. In terms of the sentence meted out, seven years is on the lower end of the guidelines. And generally speaking, judges if they like to be safe, we'll sentence within the guidelines, even though it's not required, because it really insulates them from appellate review. There's that presumption that a sentence within the guidelines is acceptable. Uh, wasn't expecting the judge to go too far below the guidelines, given the number of charges and all the factors right. involved here. But, you know, even with all of these different kinds of defendants in January 6th, it's hard to find someone that is exactly like the other. Even in a situation like this, no two defendants are really identical. Um, again, we talked about what we heard from Guy Ruffett when he was there delivering a statement to the judge. And he basically, we have a couple of quotes that I want to pull up here. He essentially at one point says, I, I'm not going to say it, I effed up essentially, right? And said he was an effing idiot. Yep. At another point, he says, I don't want anything to do with any groups or militias or any stupid S word like that. He says, I'll be lucky with my mouth if I get into a church group after this and said he wants to take multiple apologies and accept responsibility because he hates what he did. I will say, Ken, the judge also then said, well, wait a second. You were saying stuff while you were behind bars, right, waiting for the sentence. And he said, well, that was essentially to make money. I wanted to be able to fundraise on behalf of my family here. Yeah, that's right. The judge said, how do I have any confidence that what you're saying here is heartfelt? And I'm paraphrasing. She said, aren't you like Many of the other January 6th defendants, you're telling me exactly what I want to hear. Uh, generally, as Danny would tell you, defendants who, who wait to apologize uh, on the day of sentencing don't really uh, have much of a chance of persuading the judge. It's not clear that that happened in this case. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, again, a, the lower end of the guidelines, a disappointment, a real disappointment to the Department of Justice, which made a point, Hallie, of, of celebrating and drawing attention to the fact that this was the first case where they right. sought the terrorism enhancement. And remember, there's no law against domestic terrorism. There's, crim there's no criminal statute. It's right. only a sentencing enhancement um, where you argue to the judge, and they did that, and they lost. Um, and so far, they have no comment. I've been trying all day to get them to explain to me their thinking on this. Uh, uh, they're, they're not willing to do that. But, um, you know, that said, though, this is a yeah. long sentence for somebody who did not assault a police officer and did not actually enter the Capitol. He did have a gun with him, though, and he was convicted of threatening his children. So um, a significant sentence. 87 months prison, three years probation, $2,000 restitution and mandatory mental health treatment. Ken Delaney and outside court. Danny Savalos, our legal expert. Thank you both for being with us.